Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Oyer. I am a board certified emergency physician and in this patient education video we're going to talk about meningitis. Meningitis is a condition that can cause a fever, headache and stiff neck. It happens when the lining that covers the brain and spinal cord called the meninges gets inflamed or infected. There are two main types of meningitis depending on which germs are causing the infection. Bacteria causes bacterial meningitis. Viruses cause viral meningitis. Both types of meningitis can cause similar symptoms. It is very important that doctors figure out which kind of meningitis a person has. That's because bacterial meningitis is a true medical emergency. If it's not treated quickly, it can lead to brain problems such as hearing loss, learning problems, even death. This article focuses more on bacterial meningitis. What are the symptoms of bacterial meningitis? Symptoms of bacterial meningitis usually come suddenly, so people can get very sick over a short period of time. Common symptoms include fever, but some people have a temperature that's actually lower than normal instead of having a high fever. Having headache, stiff neck, this happens most often in adults and children's babies not necessarily get a stiff neck. Nausea or vomiting, acting confused or being hard to wake up, having light bothers a person's eyes, a rash that looks like red or purple spots on the skin and that does not go away when you touch it. Seizures. Seizures are waves of abnormal electrical activity in the brain. They can make people pass out or move or behave strangely. Babies can also have other symptoms, including being more sleepy or fuzzy than usual, not feeding well, and having a bulging spot on the skull. Should you see a doctor or nurse? Yes, if you have fever, headaches, stiff necks, go to the emergency department right away. If you think your child has meningitis, then you must bring him or her to the emergency room right away. Will you have tests? Absolutely. Your doctor will learn about your symptoms and do a physical exam. He or she will do tests to see if you have meningitis and find out what type of bacteria is causing the infection. The tests will include blood tests and a lumbar puncture, sometimes called a spinal tap. During this procedure, a doctor puts a thin needle into your lower back and removes a small amount of spinal fluid. Spinal fluid is the fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. He or she can do lab tests on the spinal fluid to determine if meningitis is present and whether it is bacterial or viral. A CT scan of the brain. This is an imaging test that creates pictures of your brain and can help differentiate between other causes of headache and fever and so on. How is bacterial meningitis treated? People are treated in the hospital with antibiotic medicines that go in a vein or through a tube called an IV. The antibiotics used depend on the type of bacteria that's causing the infection. Fluids and other medications that go into the vein. These medicines sometimes include steroids. The steroids help protect your brain from the effects of the bacterial meningitis. They are different from steroids the athletes take to build muscle. Can bacterial meningitis be spread from person to person? Sometimes. It depends on the type of bacteria that's causing the infection. Some types of bacteria can spread from person to person. Can bacterial meningitis be prevented? Sometimes. Certain vaccines can help prevent bacterial meningitis. Vaccines are treatments that can help prevent serious infection. To help prevent bacterial meningitis, make sure that you or your children have had all of the vaccines that you need to prevent the following infections. Meningococcus, pneumococcus, Haemophilus influenza type B, also called Hib. This is for babies and young children. If someone in your home has bacterial meningitis, ask your doctor or nurse if you should take antibiotics. Sometimes other people at home need to take antibiotics to keep from getting the infections. 
Plus, you can help avoid getting sick by washing your hands well before eating and not sharing cups or silverware. For more information on this topic, make sure you visit patienteducation.video. This and many other different videos related to patient education are available to you there. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.